Fungal acne, is it actually a thing or is it a made up term? Don't big your skin, big bandage. Welcome back to the acne channel, it's your girl Liz, aka Pretty Progress 23. Fungal acne is actually a stage name for a diagnosis called Peter Rossiforum folliculitis, or it's also known as Malazitia folliculitis. I actually took so long to pronounce that, here's a little bloopers of me pronouncing it. Peter for I can't even say it. Okay, Peter Rossiforum. Or Malaysia, la 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 la. But I think that's one of the main reasons why the internet calls it fungal acne. Not only is it a hard name, but it does make a little sense why fungal acne came about as a term. So this kind of skin infection isn't caused by bacteria like your standard acne. Instead, it's caused by yeast overgrowth. And that's where the fungal part of the name comes from because yeast and fungi are often interchangeable or they're part of the same kind of family category. So it's actually natural to have fungi on your skin, much like having bacteria on your skin. But when it's out of balance, it can grow out of control, forming itchy bumps across your skin and because of those bumps it could often be mistaken as acne hence the name fungal acne okay do you have fungal acne or not one do you have lots and lots of small similar size bumps across the skin in clusters now we're not talking about partial pimples whiteheads or blackheads where you can pop it we're not talking about like cysts where you can see large sacks of pimples we are talking about very regular size bumps across the skin most likely that could be a sign of fungal acne Two, is it mostly occurring on the chest, the back, the shoulders, or your forehead, or around your hairline? Those are the areas that fungal acne thrives. Number three, is it itchy? Usually with fungal acne, it causes you to have this urge to kind of scratch your face because of that really irritating feel on the surface of your skin. Four, have you taken oral antibiotics? Now, I feel so strongly about antibiotics. You guys already know this if you've seen my previous videos. I've taken the time to really break down why antibiotics is just not good for your body and it's not the best remedy for curing acne. So with antibiotics, when you're taking it orally, it's destroying the good and the bad bacteria within your gut, offsetting a number of side effects and that includes yeast overgrowth. When that happens, you might find your skin breaking out in these little, little bumps across the skin. Now, it's not just oral antibiotics. This is also antibiotic topical treatment. Treatment. You are kind of throwing off the balance of your pH levels as well as the balance between bacteria and fungi, putting you at high risk of getting fungal acne. Five, do you have super oily skin and sweat a lot? Fungal acne literally feeds off oil and it loves humid, wet kind of environments and that's how it grows and multiplies. So definitely if you're somebody who has oily skin, you sweat a lot for a long duration and you're not like kind of cleansing reg regularly, it also can make you at a higher risk of getting fungal acne. Six, have you been using topical treatments that are for the standard types of acne? So this really targets killing the bacteria instead of focusing on the fungi. This also means that when you're using this topical treatment, it's not going to do anything for your fungal acne and making your fungal acne worse. Seven is a big one. Do you have really high carbs, sugar, and dairy consumption? This type of diet in excess actually damages the gut, promoting yeast overgrowth. No, God, please, no, no! Your gut is a strong link to how your skin is, so be very, very careful. If more than two or three apply to you, you're most likely the perfect candidate to get fungal acne. And it sounds really tough and challenging, but the thing is, I have some solutions for you guys to help heal your fungal acne. Because I'm speaking from personal experience, I used to have it myself. I'm gonna insert a photo of what my skin looked like a couple of years ago. This was me in Melbourne. My sister was using me as a canvas when she was doing a one-on-one -on -one makeup lesson with like this famous Instagram makeup artist. And I felt really confident. I was strutting the streets in Melbourne and then I started taking selfies. I looked back at it and I was just so taken aback. My skin had bumps all over my forehead. As you can see, they're all similar in size and I just just couldn't do anything. I was using Proactive at the time, which isn't antifungal at all. It worsened my bumps and it was just really, really tough until I realized it was actually fungal acne. So these are my top tips. Tip number one, use antifungal shampoo. I know it sounds crazy, but hear me out. You know Head & Shoulders, the one that you use for dandruff? Well, that actually really does wonders for fungal acne. So look out for selenium sulfide, zinc pyrethrotone, keto, keto, 
ketoconazole they make a huge difference in healing your fungal acne two if you want to use proper skincare instead of you know using head and shoulders and you know shampoo on your face try mandelic acid from almond clear skin this isn't sponsored whatsoever i do work with them but honestly it's worked wonders for myself so many of my followers have sent me reviews personally and i really don't want you to miss out on such an awesome skincare mandelic acid 10 percent to 15 percent is actually incredible for fungal acne not only is it antibacterial which means it targets your standard acne but it's also antifungal especially when mandelic acid has a larger molecular size compared to glycolic acid for example so it's more gentle and works for all skin types especially for sensitive skin three change your diet as previously mentioned i spoke about yeast thriving on sugar carbohydrates dairy best to eliminate those but also don't just eliminate foods and starve yourself because i remember doing that make sure you're also adding nourishing foods to your diet add more fruits vegetables heaps of leafy greens and more protein now i'm not talking about meat protein i'm talking about chia seeds legumes all sorts of things where your plate is colorful four have cool to cold showers i know other skills love hot warm showers but it really ruins the outer mantle of your skin disrupting your skin barrier causing the yeast to thrive five wear fabrics that let you breathe so if you're getting fungal acne on your chest your back wearing tight clothes actually cause more friction irritation and really moist environments that cause your fungal acne to thrive what I also recommend is bringing baby wipes in a packet. Non-fragrant ones really help. So like when I'm not near a shower, I just quickly go into the bathroom and use the baby wipes to wipe my shoulders, my back, my face, and it really rejuvenates the skin. I'm clogging the pores because it's kind of gently exfoliating as well. My sixth tip is actually seeing a derm because at the end of the day, it's really hard to self-diagnose and seeing a derm can give you clearer answers and protocols that you can follow. Sometimes you can have a mixture of bacterial acne and also fungal acne. So anyways, I hope this video was helpful. Big kisses and I hope you guys have a lovely day. Bye guys.